Uh, your mom commented on my Facebook page. So does this mean that you guys are going to be coming up to Chicago anytime soon? Aw, uh, she loves you. Yeah. Read the post, lady. Brought these tips for artists because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artists! I receive a lot of questions from artists about marketing on the Facebook and the Twitter book, which honestly is quite funny to me because really, I kind of suck at doing that whole social media marketing thing. I'm not really that good at it. But chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably worse than I am at it. I'm in the video, so does that mean that I suck more or less? You definitely suck more. <laughs> so really, what do I know about social media marketing? Not that much, really. So this video might be really short. So I use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, which I am pretty sure I have no idea what I'm doing on Pinterest. Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, and I think that's it. There might be some more. So I know what you're thinking. Why so many, Rafi? Why not? Each one of these platforms has an audience. And as an artist, you want to be able to put your work and expose yourself out in front of as many people as possible. That didn't sound right. <laughs> I don't want to expose myself. <laughs> Get your work out in front of as many people as possible. So I do think that you should definitely have an easy system in place so that you could post to all your social media without it taking like a full day. Now I use an app called Aviary. It lets me edit the picture before I put it on there and it's pretty quick. I mean, I'm able to pretty much post across the board in less than three to four minutes. And I'm sure that there's other apps out there that are just as good or even better than Aviary, but um, it's the one that I use and it seems to work. So this video is about the things that I find that don't work when you're trying to market yourself on social media. Number one, tag spam. It doesn't work. Nobody likes it. Stop doing it. You know who you are. You have this picture that you just took and you're really excited about posting it. And you tag me, a bunch of people, and you tag all their mothers, and none of us have anything to do with the picture. It's a really good way to get yourself blocked from all the people that you are tagging in this picture that really they don't care about. So this is how tagging works. You tag people who are either in the picture or they have something to do with the theme of the picture or there is some kind of relevancy to them being tagged. Spam, because that's basically what it is. It's stab pammy, spam tagging, spagging. That's what it is. Spagging. Number two, the drunken angry rant. Sure, I get it. You went out, had a few drinks. There was that guy that said something that maybe at the time you didn't realize that it really ticked you off, but then later on you realize that it ticked you off and you're like, I'm, you know, this is it. I'm not going to take this. I'm going to tell him and I'm going to tell the entire world that they could go. F yep. It could get ugly real quick. Then the next morning you find yourself having to do that walk of shame where you're like apologizing to people because you know you were acting like a dumb ass the night before. Let me make something perfectly clear. I am not saying that you should not stand up for yourself. I definitely think that you should absolutely speak your mind and be completely honest. If you're being mean, hateful, you're bullying, you're name calling, you're being aggressive, that is not being honest. That's just pain and powerlessness pretending to be something else, pretending to be honesty. And all you're really doing is pouring a bunch of negativity out into the world. There are some friends of mine that I basically have their pages kind of blocked. They are ranting and raving about the government, about a certain organization, about people. And my whole thing is that if something bothers you, instead of bitching about it all cryptically, just do something about it. All right, so I guess I just went off on a tirade about people going off on a tirade. So essentially, just don't do that. Don't do not do any of that. Number three, hawking your art. Hawking means to sell goods, especially noisily or aggressively. Ladies and gentlemen, high quality art, custom made by the finest artisan in America. Get this handcrafted original work of art today for just 199 
$9.99. Don't miss out on this unlimited offer. Order now. I see posts where people put a bunch of their artwork on the ground and they take a photograph and they say, today only $20 a piece. And I'm like, man, that makes you look so desperate. And I mean, I guess that's fine. It's just, you know, the art is always so undervalued. That's not making a living. How are you going to make a living selling the, I, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I just, if anything, any of those posts that I see where I see artists do this, they don't really get that much of a response. You know, they might get like one or two people and maybe that's what they're looking for. You know, they're not looking for a long-term type thing. They're just looking for a quick hit up of like 20 or 40 bucks. If you're gonna sell some work, there are plenty of websites out there that are meant for artists to sell their work. And I think it's cool if you link that on Facebook and you tell people like, oh, check out the new work that I have in my store and somebody really likes it, they'll contact you to buy it. Number four taking yourself seriously. Really? Post things because you're excited to share them, not because you're trying to get likes or you're trying to build up your business or you're trying, just post things because you want to share them with people. And I know that this seems counterintuitive because all of these platforms are designed to get people to interact back and forth, you know, and you have almost this rating system. How many likes am I gonna get? And like, oh, this makes me feel good. And it becomes addictive in that sense. Or because Facebook tried to bully you into it with their notification that says, we noticed you haven't posted anything recently. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's just another way that you can express yourself. You're already expressing yourself with your art or with your music or whatever it is. Look at social media in that way. It's like almost like a lifeline that connects out to the rest of the world. And it's your opportunity to express your opinions and, and the things that you love. You know, me, I like expressing a message of positivity. You may want to express another message. I mean, I got no control over that. I might not follow you, but that's cool. And if you do happen to get a bunch of followers and a bunch of likes and are like super popular online, don't let it go to your head. Seriously, this could happen to anyone. I remember going to a party and somebody was like, hey, nice to meet you. What do you do for a living? And in my mind, I was like, what? Don't you know who I am? I am Rafi, the artist. Luckily, I caught myself before I actually said that out loud because that would have been extremely embarrassing. You almost start to value yourself more because you are like, oh, I've got 1500 likes. Look at me. Oh, look at Klee. She only has like 700 likes. The problem is that that's such a false sense of security and a false sense of self-esteem. It explains why a celebrity would have a fit when they walk into their dressing room and they have green M&Ms instead of blue M&Ms and they're like, oh, this is not what I... What that tells me is that they're actually really insecure and that they need the people around them to respond to them in a certain way in order to make them feel better about themselves. So don't tag spam, don't angry rant, don't hawk your items, and uh, don't take yourself too seriously. Listen, you are an artist. You are one of the most divergent and creative thinkers on the planet. So just Go on there and just add your own flair and do things and play around with it and see what works and what doesn't work. That's it. Just get creative with it and have fun. There you have it, my four tips on what not to do in social media marketing. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Also, if you have any questions for me pertaining to anything about art or even life in general, I will be more than happy to give you my opinion. You may not agree on the answer that I have, but that's why this is called Rafi's Tips for Artists. If you're an artist, make sure to add a link to your artwork to the question so I can check it out. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking awesome. I totally adore you. And if you like this video and you want to see more, go ahead and click right over here to subscribe. And if you want to watch our last video, go ahead and click right over here. And that's it for tonight. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.